your boy Cute, and you're listening to the Cute Up Minute on the Josh Ayers Show on WHAY 98.3 FM. I recently talked to Buddy Nielsen, frontman of the hardcore band Since His Fail. Real cool guy. In addition to the band's U.S. indie albums, Still Searching, Life Is Not, A Waiting Room, and The Fire, those were chart-topping, man. Band is taking a break, and Buddy is now working on a project with members of the band Finch. Those are my bros out in Cali. What's up, Finch? Big shout out to Finch. And uh, Don Lithgow, DML Studios. What's up, Big Daddy? <laughs> it's been uh, reported that the new band is called Speak the Truth and will apparently sound like 2002. It's interesting. This interview is about more than that, so check it out. Cute up radio. Hello. Buddy, your boy Q, how you doing? Good, how you doing? I'm doing double time, always tired as I can imagine you are. <laughs> I'm not that tired right now. <laughs> cool, so let's get into it. I'm hearing that you are working on a new album with uh, members of Finch. Yeah. So tell me about the project. Where are you with that, and how did that come about? We got a couple songs. We got like eight or nine. We just finished some uh, final demos, and we're going to be sending them around to, um, you know, to some of our friends in the music industry. Uh, we're probably going to record a full length, and we're going to play some shows, just some initial shows on this year, and then have a full length come out next year. We were supposed to do a tour with Finch, since the sale was, but uh, it ended up not happening. And three of the guys from Finch, so they just hit me up there, like, yeah, we were you know, writing a bunch of songs and kind of want to work on something else, and we wanted to see if you were interested. So sort of happened maybe like two, like three months ago. Right on, man. I'm looking forward to this project. Since this fail is out of New Jersey, what's the difference between the two scenes, the New Jersey scene mm-hmm. and the West Coast scene for punk music? I think the East Coast scene was a lot more close-knit in some ways, just because it's, you know, it's New Jersey is a much smaller state than California, and even in a much smaller area than Los Angeles or just Southern California, so it kind of created more of a um, just overall sort of environment where, you know, you could really be exposed to people who are making really good music at a local level, it just it's not that different. It just was different in terms of size. You know, I feel like here people are really super spread out and you know, each little like, you know, there's an Orange County scene and there's an LA scene and then there's a beach scene and then there's the inland empire. You know, where it's like in, in New Jersey there's really like, you know, there's only one scene. There's like a South Jersey scene and a North Jersey, you know, New York Philly, but other than that, I mean it's it's not like here where everything's split up into little tiny things and it just seems a little bit uh, different in that way and then uh, I don't know, yeah there was one report that I read that said at one time since this fell wasn't liked people don't really like us but we, we, that was we were super young and we, we all had a lot of issues <laughs> uh, and you know being from New Jersey we didn't really have a like a real cat like a real way of uh, dealing with people in a respectable manner. But we were super young, you know. Some of our drummer was like 15 when we started, so. Trust me, brother. I've been in the game for a minute, and I've never met an artist or band that hasn't had issues. <laughs> But bro, <laughs> seriously, in my opinion, you've become like a modern day superhero. <laughs> no, I'm I'm serious. Um, I'm told that you spend time in between sets while on tour helping out organizations like Punk Out LGBT and other organizations, and you're an advocate for you know a lot of diversity issues on a social level. Man, it's cool. Yeah, it's super difficult to paint in broad strokes. I mean, I'm sure you know it's different. For anybody who's in any kind of minority, whatever it is, it's like some areas feel safer, some areas feel not, some areas feel like they're completely aligned with your beliefs, and some areas feel like they're the exact opposite. So it's sort of like the struggle. Because our country's so big and so diverse, it's sort of like figuring out those places, you know, where, that feel comfortable and, and um, feel like they include whatever you need to feel comfortable but yeah it really depends uh, the what 
stuff I get. If I open my mouth and talk about it um, on the internet, people definitely respond in, in less than appropriate manners. But yep. in person, you know, people don't really bring it up. I think a lot of people are too afraid to speak about things or challenge things in person. Whereas on the internet, it's kind of there's an, an you know anonymous um, ability to just sort of say whatever you want, even if it's not even true or you believe it, and sort of get away with it. Um, so, it, you know, for me, the internet is something I've had to like kind of over the course of the last year and a half figure out how to manage. You know, because I want to be vocal. I think it's important to talk about the things I care about, but I also have to make sure that I understand that like. I'm going to see a lot of ugly stuff that I don't necessarily want to see or be open to. So I have to find a way to, like, manage that. You know, because in person that shows, I feel in some respect, um, in, in live setting, people will yell stuff and say stuff. Um, but no one will come up to me after the show and say, hey, man, I just want to let you know that, like, I don't agree with what you're doing or anything. You know, generally those people just leave and complain on the Internet, um, which is interesting about our culture right now. You know? uh, and I had a conversation with a guy at work about Trump. Uh, you know, clearly, I don't agree or want to be a part of anything that's going on with that. But we had a conversation for 30 minutes about it. You know, and I talked about it and he talked about it and... You know, he was able to see where I was coming from, and I'm able to understand where he's coming from. And not that it makes me agree with him in any respect, but I think that having that conversation with him allows him to maybe see that there is other opinions out there, and they're not just calling people, you know, uh, you know, that all people that are against Trump are racist, ignorant, stupid, you know, Neanderthals. Because the, the, the biggest <laughs> issue is that. They're not, and that's what's, that's what's even scarier, honestly. What scares me is not that there's just some, you know, redneck idiot that wants to deport Muslims and get rid of, uh, you know, ban Muslims and deport Mexicans. Like, I'm not afraid of that guy. I'm afraid of the normal, level-headed thinking person that wants to vote for Trump but doesn't really, under, you know, is pushing away all these glaring facts about what he does and, and who he, and what he represents. And so having to have conversations with people about difficult things is something that I think can't be done on the internet. Like, you can't do it. Do you believe that you have even more of a responsibility to speak out on social issues being the front man of a post-punk band who's just come out? Yeah, I mean, I do. I, I do. I think so. I think I do. And I think I have a responsibility to people, you know, to represent some level of, um, I don't want to say role model, but just sort of a, a way in which you could, like, live your life and deal with the things I've dealt with in my life. So not necessarily as, as, as that it is possible to live a happy, productive life um, going through the things I have. So that's not necessarily more like a role model, like, but just allowing people to see that there are people out there that do get to make it to the other side of these things that seem almost like maybe impossible. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, but I think it's also been a struggle for me to like assume that role too. I think I like have had to struggle to find a way to talk about things in a productive manner and, and not get so riled up, which is really difficult for me to not learn how to do that. I can only imagine hanging there, brother. It's been a process. <laughs> so, buddy, if you got a few more minutes, I want to play this game with you. Sure, sure. This is the first time we're doing this, so bear with me, okay? Sure. It's time to play. I wrote that. <laughs> so, buddy, what we're going to do here is we're going to actually read some lyrics from some songs by your band, Since It's Fail, and you tell us what song the lyrics are from. Cool? Are you ready? Yeah. Here we go. You have a heart. Don't forget this. It's so easy to become protective. Don't push the world out of the way just because you are in pain. Uh, okay, that comes from uh, the single we released last year, the EP with Man Overboard. The song is called, um, 
<laughs> All you need is already within you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. cool. <laughs> you ready for the next one? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Choose the passion you awoke in me, the fire alive, the courage to see. An unexamined life isn't worth living. Trust what's in your heart and keep searching. Um, that's from Holy Mountain. Sometimes I get so silent, I can hear my heartbeat. Sometimes I get so silent, the memories come back to me. That's from the last record, but I don't remember the song. That's from The Courage of an Open Heart. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Last night I found heaven. It was on the tip of my tongue, and it reminded me of all the times I was young. Uh, that's from Wolves of the Door. I got that one. All right, this is last one. Well, I had a dream last night. But that's from Free Fall Out of Parachute. Way to finish, man. Yeah, yeah, that one. Hey, buddy, listen, man, we appreciate you spending time with us. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Man, keep us posted on the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, listening to the project when it comes out, man. Thank you so much. You have a wonderful day. And that'll do it for me. This is your boy, Q of Cued Up Radio for the Josh Ayers Show on WHAY 98.3 FM. Peace.